The Wild West is a time of lawlessness, danger, and adventure. It was a time when outlaws roamed the land and ruled with guns. Among them was Frank McLaury, a notorious outlaw who instilled fear in the hearts of those who dared to cross his path. He is a man who lives by his own rules and takes what he wants, no matter the cost. But who is Frank McLaury and what led him down the path of crime? In this video, we'll dive into the life of this legendary outlaw while also exploring the events that led to his infamous death during the fight at the OK Corral. Get ready to experience the thrill and excitement of the Wild West like never before as we take a trip back in time to the days when lawlessness reigned. Frank McLaurie, known as Rob in his youth, was born on March 3, 1849 with the full name Robert Findlay McLaurie in Courtright, New York. He was one of ten children born to Margaret Rowland and Robert Houston McLaurie, descended from Matthew McLaurie of Ireland and his son Thomas McLaurie of Courtright, New York. The McLaurie family lived and worked on a farm in Meredith, Delaware County, New York before moving to a new farm near Belle Plain in Benton County, Iowa in 1855. It was here that Robert Houston McLaurie began his practice as an attorney and there Frank McLaurie and his siblings grew up together. Tragedy struck when Margaret, Frank's beloved mother, fell victim to a typhoid epidemic that devastated their community on October 11, 1859. Frank lost his mother at the age of nine, leaving a gap between them. As a result, Frank's father, Robert, had to raise their 11 children alone. Robert was 65 years old in August 1875 and had been a widower for more than 15 years. Despite the challenges, he has six sons and five daughters striving to provide for his family in the face of adversity. However, by 1875, Robert's health began to decline. His two sons died. In a move that would change their lives forever, Robert remarried James Arbuthnot, a widow and neighbor, on September 13, 1860. The mixed family currently consists of Robert's eight children and Jane's eight children, making up a family of 16 children in total. Frank, who still lives at home with his eight siblings, has to adjust to this new family dynamic, which must have been difficult for him after losing his mother at such a young age. Losing a mother at any age can have a profound effect on a child, and for Frank, it was a tragedy that shaped his life. The McLaurie family is no stranger to sacrifice and loss. Frank's brother, Edwin, bravely joined Iowa's 14th Volunteer Squad and fought in the brutal battles of Fort Donelson and Pittsburgh Landing, Shiloh. However, tragedy struck when Edwin was arrested and imprisoned in Macon, Georgia. Although pardoned, he returned home to his family but died of hunger and disease in October 1862. The loss of Edwin, a brave soldier who fought for his country, was a heavy blow to him. Meanwhile, Frank's older brother, Will, is still serving in the Union Army, continuing to sacrifice his love for the greater good. After the war ended, the McLaurys moved 50 miles north to Buchanan County, Iowa, where they began farming land in an unincorporated area outside of Hazleton, known as Hazleton Town. Despite the challenges they faced, the family worked tirelessly to build a new life on their 800-acre farm. The three remaining siblings, Frank, known as Rob in the family, Christiana, known as Anna, Tom, and Sarah, Caroline, the youngest in the family, whom they call Carrie, are living on their father's farm in 1859. In 1878, the McLaurie brothers, Frank and Tom, 
embarked on a daring adventure by joining a cattle drive led by John Slaughter and John Chisholm. They went to Hereford, Arizona, where they were fortunate enough to have jobs for Old Man Clanton. The Clanton family owns one of the largest cattle ranches in the state, making it a desirable place to work. After a while, Old Man Clanton sold his farm to buy a new ranch along the San Pedro River in southern Arizona. Ike Clanton chose to stay. The McLaurie brothers continued their work with the Clanton family. Despite the social differences between them, the three men quickly became friends. In 1879, Frank and Tom McLaurie were thriving in their cattle business and decided to buy land along the Babo Kumari Creek, which flows into the San Pedro River. There, they built a house at Soldier's Hole, which some historical records suggest was owned by Frank Patterson, not the McLaurie brothers. Meanwhile, nearby Tombstone is experiencing a population boom due to the silver rush. Frank helped local police officer Melvin Jones arrest two soldiers who stole the government harness, but both Frank and Jones deny making any arrests. After settling in the San Pedro River Valley, the McLaurie brothers met Curly Bill Brocious. It was on October 27, 1880, while they were staying with Brocious, when tragedy occurred. Brocious accidentally shot and killed Tombstone Marshal Fred White, and the brothers were briefly detained. However, before his death, White said that the shooting was accidental, and Brocious was released. The McLory brothers were famous for stealing cattle from Sonora, Mexico and selling them back to local butchers and Old Man Clanton. The situation escalated on July 25, 1880, when Lieutenant Joseph H. Hurst requested the help of Wyatt and Morgan Earp, Vice Marshal of the United States. Virgil Earp and Agent Marshal Williams of Wells Fargo to track down the six children. Mules were stolen from Camp Rucker. These mules are property of the United States Army, making it a federal matter. Acting on a tip, they found the animals at McLaurie's ranch on the Baba Komari River, and the trademark iron was used to rebrand U.S. to D-8. To avoid a bloody confrontation, cowboy Frank Patterson promises to return the mules. However, two days later, the cowboys showed up without a mule and mocked Captain Hurst and the Earps. Hearst responded by printing and distributing a flyer describing the theft and offering rewards for the trial and conviction of the thieves. The leaflet accused Frank McLaurie of assisting in concealing the mules and specifically stated that the stolen animals were stashed at or near the McLaurie brothers' farm, with the government seal printed on the left shoulder. Frank McLaurie was furious at these accusations and wrote an angry response in the cowboy-friendly nugget, calling Hearst a coward, vagabond, rogue, and malicious liar. He even accused Hearst of stealing the mules himself. This only adds fuel to the fire, and tensions continue to rise. Virgil Earp reports that Frank approached him and warned him, if you follow us again like you did, you'll have to fight anyway. The situation was rapidly spiraling out of control, and it was only a matter of time before the violence broke out. In November 1879, shortly after arriving at Tombstone, a prize-winning horse from Wyatt Earp was stolen. It took him more than a year to learn that the horse had been sighted in Charleston, and worse still, it was owned by Ike and Billy Clanton. In an attempt to get the horse back, Wyatt and his friend Doc Holliday rode to Clanton Ranch near Charleston. Along the way, they run into Sheriff Johnny Behan, who is also arriving at the ranch to serve an election hearing subpoena against Ike Clanton. According to Wyatt's later testimony, Billy Clanton insolently asked him if he was still alive, implying that Earp's horse had long since disappeared. 
Despite this rude behavior, Earp managed to get the horse from the Clanton Ranch. However, it was not without tension, as Billy did not initially show any title documents, further proving that he was fully aware that the horse belonged to Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp's horse death is just one of the many in incidents that contributed to the already simmering tension between the Earps and the Clanton Gang. The Clanton Gang often stole cattle and horses from their neighbors, and the Earps was no exception. This incident ignited a fire between the two groups and later led to the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral. The town of Tombstone was already boiling with tension when the McLaurie brothers arrived in October 26, 1881 to sign a cattle sale. The Earps and the Cowboys had been at odds with each other for a while and the arrival of the McLaurie brothers only escalated the conflict. The day begins with Ike Clanton being accused of bringing a weapon into town and then Tom McLaurie comes to pick him up. That's when things get out of hand. Wyatt Earp and Tom McLaurie had a heated exchange, and Wyatt testified that he saw a pistol in Tom's belt, prompting him to hit Tom with the pistol. Later that day, the Clantons and McLaurie's, along with Billy Claiborne, faced off against the Earps and Doc Holliday in the infamous gunfight at the OK Corral. The situation escalated rapidly. Several witnesses testified that Frank and Billy Clanton drew their weapons first. Other cowboy loyalists have backed their version of events in which Tom opens his jacket to show he's unarmed. However, Earps and Holiday took a different view and ended up killing Frank and Tom McLaurie, along with Billy Clanton. All three are buried at Tombstone's Boot Hill Cemetery. William McLaurie, brother of the murdered McLaurie brothers, spent most of his finances pursuing charges against the Earps and Doc Holliday. It was a tragic event that rocked Tombstone to the core and will go down in history as one of the most notorious gunfights of the Wild West era. It is remarkable that Tom McLaurie had left his pistol at a nearby pub on the afternoon of the gunfight, but the Earps had no way of knowing that. The event remains controversial to this day, with some believing that the Earps and Holiday acted in self-defense, while others consider them cold-blooded killers. Either way, the OK Corral gunfight will forever be remembered as a brutal and deadly duel that left a lasting mark on American history. Frank McLaurie is one of the Wild West's most notorious and feared outlaws. His reputation as a tough and ruthless cowboy who will do nothing to protect his interests. Make him a formidable opponent. Through his life ended in the gunfight at the OK Corral, his legacy lives on. Today is remembered as a symbol of the era of lawlessness and wildness of the American frontier. Despite being seen as a villain, Frank McLaurie's impact on the Wild West is undeniable and the enduring passion, his life and legend continues to this day. Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.